Okay, um, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Tim. I'm a principal software engineer at, at Lilt. And uh, this talk will be about lessons from scaling AI-powered translation services using Istio. Um, and I'll be co-presenting with uh, Malini. Uh, hi, I'm Malini Bandaru, and I'm actually representing Iris here today, who's worked closely with Tim, but she couldn't be here this morning. And I'm a principal engineer at Intel, and I'm a cloud native architect. Great. Uh, I was just making sure. um, oh yeah, so I'm a principal software engineer at Lilt, and so, uh, well, what is Lilt? Uh, Lilt has to do with AI. Uh, Lilt is a platform for uh, uh, for contextual AI and, and translations. Uh, we work with um, large organizations to you know they have lots of content they need translated. We help help them with that, and uh, you know we have uh, predictive uh, translation suggestions in context learning, uh, fine tuning over time. And uh, these sorts of features, um, you can imagine uh, uh, there's, there's been a lot of AI hype lately. And so we, we've had to adjust to that. And we've had to, to move quickly to, uh, to, to get the features out that we want to, to, to serve this new uh, AI demand. And so. If we just go to the start here, uh, this is sort of our initial architecture before Istio came into the picture. Uh, if we just considered sort of a single uh, feature, uh, say, that we had to build, um, you know, there's a back-end team involved. They're exposing APIs over RabbitMQ. Uh, there's a front-end team. Uh, they're consuming these APIs over RabbitMQ, and they're doing additional work to expose that functionality over uh, REST API. And if we needed to do any sort of custom routing or create new subdomains or, or anything like that, uh, we had to get the infra team involved. And so if we were uh, just, you know, just for a single uh, feature like this, there were many JIRA tickets. You know, all of these teams are, are located across the globe in different time zones. And it was just really hard to, um, you know, the problem seems simple. It's like, I just want to expose this API endpoint. Uh, you know, why do I have to create three JIRA tickets and, and uh, get up at 7 a.m. to talk to someone in, in Europe to, to do this? And uh, this is uh, something we wanted to change. We wanted to be able to iterate more quickly. We wanted to be able to uh, build these sorts of features more independently without all of this inner team uh, collaboration that needed to happen. And so this is sort of uh, what we landed on. Uh, this is how Istio came into the picture here. Uh, we wanted to use Istio as, a, as essentially the API gateway. So we wanted Istio to, to sit uh, on top of all of uh, essentially all of our traffic, and we wanted to be able to uh, route to different backends, um, things like this. This is sort of just a, a normal, uh, sort of more microservice-based architecture. And so uh, in this sort of environment, uh, you know, we have a bunch of app teams here, and uh, one of the main goals of what we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure that the app teams could self-serve any routing or domain provisioning uh, that, that they would need to do over the course of, of building a feature. And uh, you know, we wanted to make sure the infrastructure team uh, was able to, to manage Istio installation, knew uh, where all of the configurations were, uh, were able to, to help out if, if anything went wrong. Uh, but the, the main goal was empowering app developers to to, to self-serve all, all of these needs. And so some of the things we did to, uh, to, to accomplish that is uh, 
yeah, enabling individual teams to own authentication and routing. And so uh, as part of this uh, in the Istio API gateway, uh, we, we developed a external authorization provider. And, uh, and, and so, you know, each application team didn't have to worry about authentication. Uh, they were able to just uh, define their own authorization policies and secure uh, their API endpoints and their, and their services. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, and, and also uh, one of the important features here is uh, inner service communication uh, being, uh, being more secure as well. And so, well, I, I guess just quickly, some things that we learned uh, through the course of, of, of developing this uh, is that it's hard to change the engine while the car is running. Uh, you know, so we wanted to be able to introduce this to our teams, uh, to our clusters, to our infrastructure. Uh, without having to, to sort of stop the world. Uh, you know, all of the teams are busy building features. We don't want to interfere with uh, the work that's already ongoing. Um, and so one of the important things for us, uh, and one of the reasons we decided to go with Istio in the first place, uh, was that it allowed for us to gradually adopt features over time. And so we were able to slowly but surely uh, you know, install Istio into our clusters. We we're able to find sort of self-contained use cases uh, for it and, and prove it, uh, you know, prove this functionality on a small scale and show it off to, uh, to other teams. And uh, that really started to get more momentum around uh, using Istio. Uh, and, uh, you, you know, part of our, our rollout to this was to make sure we had adequate documentation in place for, for these different types of stakeholders uh, in our organization. So you know, application developers, more platform developers or, or uh, infrastructure developers, uh, that we had tailored, uh, you know, documentation tailored specific to, uh, to what they cared about. And we had, uh, you know, for like the app developer use cases, we uh, we, we we made plenty of, of example sort of Helm charts that people could reference and and copy into their own projects. Um, yeah, and in in general, we're we're uh, we were able to roll out Istio and gain more use of it uh, across our teams and across our application. And we weren't, uh, yeah, so just one of the other key learnings was, you know, to introduce new things rather than replacing old things. And so gradually over time, you know, we we're able to just introduce new services, new API endpoints uh, that made use of Istio and made use of this new technology. And, just sort of phase out the, the old things or, or keep them around, you know, if, if we need to keep backwards compatibility. Yeah, and so some important aspects of the Lilt platform, uh, you know, is, uh, you know, there's a couple things here, uh, low latency suggestion responses. And so, uh, you know, people use Lilt to, to help inform the translations that they that they uh, that they provide, and uh, it's important that these you know network requests are you know have low latency, and we don't want extra network hops to, to slow down requests. And also, we care about data security uh, uh, in terms of uh, you know inner service communication. We want to make sure that any data that is sent across the network is is secured, is encrypted, um, and you know these two things. You know if you're, uh, you know we don't want to compromise on data security, and we don't want to uh, compromise on on latency, and uh, you know there are uh, there are some new cool features 
that, uh, that have been developed in Istio that make it so we don't have to compromise between those two. We can get low latency and we can get security. And so I'm going to hand it over. Uh, um, and yes, you can Hi. present. Thank you, Tim. So Lilt is a real world use case. And this whole engagement between Intel and Lilt is to help adoption. So you have cool technology called Istio, but how many people are using it? And they're real application developers, busy with their features. How do they leverage it? So this is really a collaboration engagement. So at this point, we'd like to tell the Lilt folks, like there are other wonderful things in Istio that you can leverage. And one of them as part of our next steps of slow adoption, because remember a lot of this is cultural, like Tim said, it's a running engine. You can't change everything. So some of this has to be paced. So the next thing we'd like them to use is the crypto multi-buffer library. It essentially provides boring SSL for RSA and it uses Intel's AVX 512 instructions. That's really vector operation operations that allows eight simultaneous channels of encryption. And with this, you can get significant improvement from 23 to 25% latency reduction, which is super important for a translation task. You have something coming up online, either it's in a Zoom call or a Teams call, and you want to see live what somebody's saying in another language, or it's text that's popping up on your screen and you want it just translating as you're scrolling down. Another important thing that it does provide is more queries per second. So it's about 30% improvement. So with uh, the crypto multi-buffer library, we get significant improvement. What else? There's a lot of routing and filtering happening in the whole system. And this chart just kind of tells you what's happening. If you were to use Envoy, there's a listener, there are network filters, HTTP filters, there's RBAC and so on and so forth. But something common to all of them is they can be leveraging hyperscan. And there is a solution and implementation that's even better than Google RE2, you know, the regular expression uh, processor that hyperscan can solve for you. And that provides you significant improvement too. So you can get about 16% reduction in latency. So that's awesome. And more queries again. So 20% improvement there. And last but not least, security is important, you know, for all your communications, whether your requests to keep the requests uh, safe, you want to protect all those MTLS keys. And this is where process-based isolation with SGX has been integrated in Istio and Envoy to provide you that protection. So at the Istio gateway, you can use SGX. At the Envoy sidecar proxy, you can use it. And then you could even have a trusted certificate service inside your cluster, and they can all use SGX. Oh, wait, I do want to show you something here. So when I say trusted and secure, what does this mean? If you do get secrets in Kubernetes, it just pops out the secrets. It's not really very secret, it's in the plane. But if you do execute it where your services are running in SGX, they just return you blanks. So that's about all the other things that Lilt can use coming soon. And it's a cultural thing, so he has to pace all his engineers, give them enough documentation, handhold a bit. So we handhold with them, they handhold with their developers, and that's how we bring value. And I can see us also going towards Z Tunnel and Ambient soon as they increase. Currently, they have about 100 pods, so several services, but latency is their big issue that they do want to keep low so that they can translate in real time. And with that, we're open for questions. Any questions? Yes, please. Yes. Same thing. SGX can protect all your keys. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, that's the best way to use it, you know, MTLS. It's good. I mean, it's, just, it's really just same encryption, right? But you just keep your key, and that's part of the initial negotiation. 
I certify myself to you, you certify, and then we use our keys. So it's just the initial handshake. How do you know if you can use Intel SGX, or how do you know if you have that available? Ah, so that's a very good question. It's available at scale in Azure Cloud, uh, but not as available in other clouds. You can have it on-prem. Uh, Intel's Ice Lake servers have it, and then it's SPR, and all future products have it too. So, but it's process-based, so you can have a very small trusted compute base. It's efficient and fast. Yes? It's definitely grown now. Uh, there are no such size limitations. And you can dynamically also grow the memory you allocate to SGX. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, so the question on this side was, are there any limitations with SGX? In the past, there were. Uh, the amount of memory you could allocate to an SGX enclave is limited, but that limitation has since been removed. Further, there is a library OS called Grameen that you can just attach to your thing, ensure that everything works with the Grameen library OS. So it's much easier to use SGX. It's no longer the case that you have to use the ISA or the SDK. You take your application, combine it with the library OS, ensure that it works, check it, and then go for it. And the Envoy proxy and all works with SGX has been confirmed. Yes? Uh, so attestation, uh, he, he's right, you know, there's a few steps initially to set up SGX in your cluster. Uh, there's a step where you register your machine, get certificates. Then there's another library that goes with it. But once that's done, you have a few options. You could use an external attestation service like Intel's Trusted Authority, or you might even use one provided by your cloud provider. It's all a matter of how much you trust whether you want to keep your CSP inside your trust co compute base. You could use MAA, the you know, Microsoft Azure Attestation Service, or Intel's uh, Trust Authority. Welcome. Any other questions? Thank you. So we're very thrilled that a real-world machine learning app is using Istio and Wishing Lilt all the best. Thank you. Thank you.